Morning, Massimo. Good morning, Andrea. And uh, good morning, good afternoon to all our attendees. Thank you for joining this uh, GMI webinar. Today is dedicated to the power supply, to the safety power supply. Uh, let's say we, we are specialized in safety power supplies, not standard. So we, we try to explain why it's important uh, for discussing and having and using safety power supplies in your safety applications. Let's wait another few seconds and we start. Okay. I think uh, all of you must please confirm that uh, can see the, the first slides. Yes, perfect. Okay. A um, few questions and a few information. Don't use uh, Q and I. Uh, do use the chat Q, Q and I if you want to make any question during that. Uh, this webinar will try to, to answer during that. If not, we will just send an email. Let's, see. Let's uh, concentrate on this and uh, close in maximum one hour. And uh, let's start now. So it's, uh, we have just a few slides regarding the company. We are obliged to wait and give you say, um, some ideas about the company and who is uh, doing that. Uh, we are today, Massimo and I. My name is the Global Account Manager in the GMI organization. I'm uh, working here since uh, 2015. Was responsible for European market now with the global accounts. So Massimo is our expert, our product manager, and responsible for customer support. And has a very long experience in electronic and uh, is connected with our R&D department for any questions. So if you have any trouble or problem in using our products, Massimo is the right point of contact. He's a functional safety engineer. The company, so the company is uh, GEM International for the experience. Uh, we are based in Italy. We produce uh, basically safe device and seal certified uh, interfaces for main critical applications. We this is a product to be produced. So as barrier safety release, isolator, safety power supplies, multiplexer, termination board for main PLCs and DCS in the market. Uh, Heart multiplexer, salt protection indicators. And uh, we also provide the uh, functional safety X trainings and services. This, this is a webinar. We also have uh, a program dedicated for the functional safety for um, became functional safety engineer uh, certified by TUF. And uh, also EX trainings. If you are in need of anything, just uh, let us know. Uh, we have uh, our goals as at the certification. We provide uh, all possible certification for uh, critical marketers uh, like EX and uh, SEAL, of course. We also have certification for maritime. And uh, you see the logos here. Uh, very important, of course, we have uh, factual safety management in place for all our products. Um, Produce 100% in Italy, complete traceability, full testing, 100% uh, raw service compliant. Organization, nine offices all over the world, uh, distributors, uh, 200 people, courses, and number of installations all over the world. And uh, this is the customer we divide by system vendors, uh, EPC, OEMs, and end users. We are spread it all over the world with our customers. Let's go to the topic for today, power supply. I leave the, say the talk to Massimo. Thank you, Andrea, and welcome also from my side to all our attendees. Well, we begin our webinar by talking about and listing which application require a safe power supply system. And by safe, we mean a system that guarantees our industrial process high reliability in terms of process availability. A, a simple system to maintain, which can be installed in critical environmental conditions. In a simple words, a system certified to ensure that uh, our uh, safety instrument system can work safely while maintaining high availability. 
A power supply system is required for high demand application, such as offshore platform, firefighting system, fire and gas application, and so on. All those applications in which safety is in the first place, but also in all those applications where the industrial process must always be kept constant and productive in order not to have evil losing of money. But uh, what are the most important, important requirements that the market asks to us for uh, this highly reliable power system? Of course, a safety power system, uh, a safety power supply has to be compliant with the ESC 61508 regulation and meets the demands of functional safety. Another key point for the market is the possibility to install the power supply system in certified area. This allows us to install the system closer to the load, saving on uh, cabling cost, for example. To allow uh, installation in a certified area, the GMI power supply system has been certified for Zone 2 Division 2 installation and offer the possibility to disconnect a module without interrupting the normal operation. This functionality is uh, ensured by the auto swapping system, which uh, each rack of the power supply system can be equipped with. Not having the auto swapping uh, capability means that uh, the final user must install additional circuit breakers certified for Zone 2 Division 2. Furthermore, the auto swapping function allows us to, to have easy maintenance and at the same time, it allows us to have a device able to minimize the downtime because um, as we have already said, an interruption of normal operation can cause economic damage to a plant. Each power, each power module mounted on a system with the op swap capability can be removed on its own without disrupting or affecting the application, which is another of the most frequent market requests. Also, in the event of a failure, you you need easy access to all device data to deal with the problem quickly and effectively. Unwanted or undesirable behaviors, the lack of a specific functionality must be highlighted and easy diagnosed. The diagnostic module on board the GMI power supply system rack allow us to have all the required data under control and to be able to transfer them via Modbus or via digital contact to a dedicated system. This functionality allows us to, to have easy troubleshooting of our system and the, the entire loop. And again, uh, every application has uh, different safety and functional requirements which all need to be fulfilled by a flexible system. Modular design, configuration, and mounting option are all features that must be taken into account. And uh, our power supply is flexible system that can be arranged according to the requirements of the application. It's possible to, to have different rack dimension or have a front or wall mounting option the output type and the related redundancy can be arranged. In fact, more than 50 different configurations can be done or foresee. Our system uh, has a low consumption. This means uh, being able to manage a system with the low energy consumption, which means contain costs in terms of installation and maintenance. This must be done without suffering, losing in terms of efficiency, without compromising the life expectancy of the system and its integrity. The PSS 1250 system meets these needs with an efficiency of nearly 90% and an extended operating range. 
uh, our system is available up to seal free. We know that to meet the ESC 61508 requirements, instrument must be able to detect or tolerate under voltage and or over voltage condition, and also maintain the SIF within the normal operating C, uh, range. These requirements is necessary to avoid dangerous situation and to protect the instrumentation involved in the application. The PSS 1250 is a certified device with both under voltage and over voltage protection. And last but not least, uh, harsh environments operation. Many installation in the oil and gas pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical uh, chemical or petrochemical industry require the device to work in our um, harsher environmental condition. So this device has to be designed according to this requirement. Since uh, we are talking about installation for safety purpose, the capability of a device to work in such environmental is a key point. We can start from uh, we can start from uh, the extended temperature range. We can see that it's uh, coated by dipping, and it has been tested for marine application and test for vibration and the EMC certification. This feature determines uh, the fact that the PSS 1250 has a 20 years lifetime expectation or 160,000 hours operation. Well, now let's uh, start by introducing the concept of the safety instrument system. This is a set of subsystems that make up the safety loop. Within this safety loop, we have field device such as transmitter or sensor, which allow us to control, detect, and measure variables in the field, such as temperature, pressure, or other. They are drive by buyers or isolators that provides for limiting the current towards the hazardous area or to isolate field instrument. And in turn, the signal sent by the field loop will be acquired, managed, and interpreted by what is the brain of the SIS or the PLCDCS system, which will decide on any action to be taken to make a plan to safe. And again, power interface as can be a safety relay, which will then act on, on a valve or on the on an actuator, which allow us to bring the system safety in case of need. The main concept that needs to be understood is that uh, every single element of a SIS must be sized with a seal level, such as to allow us to obtain the overall seal of the SIS required. All the power supply that will be part of the SIS, for example, those that will power the PLCDCS, those that will supply voltage to operate valves and then actuators, those that will allow barrier, isolator, and transmitter to work properly, will also play a fundamental role in safety-related loop. And it's also important that they also have an adequate seal level. All component of a SIF, including power supply, must be safety related and have a seal level. This uh, help us to have a safety loop and with the correct redundancy, a loop with high availability to the process. This slide show our safety loop made up of all its elements, correctly sized and seal certified to get the most out uh, of uh, the functional safety of our system. Let's uh, us ask ourselves now, why shouldn't uh, the power supply system that feeds the wool system be seal certified? Why shouldn't we make sure that the system that support the entire SIS is also certified for functional safety? Keep in mind that uh, the failure of the power supply system can cause the complete loss of our loop, with consequently losing in terms of productivity and therefore of money. 
it's also really important to make the power supply system that supports our entire safety loop safe and reliable. In the following slide, some extracts from uh, the ESC 61508 are show which deal specifically with the power supply system of the SIS, which must be considered in the seal calculation. It's absolutely logical that uh, to have a seal loop, the power supply uh, system for our SIS must also be seal certified. What will be the point of having a seal free certified loop and power supply system for this loop, which is not seal certified. It's a, it's a contradiction. It's a contradiction that goes against the dictates of ESC 6150 and 8. So why it's correct to use a safety power supply system? It's uh, fair to distinguish what is a standard power supply and what a safe and certified power supply system like that of GMI offers. Here in the slide, we mention what are the main reasons that lead us to advise against the use of a simple standard power supply for our application. As we have seen in the previous slide, a standard power supply is not designed based on the directive of the ESC 61508. It does not have, have made a calculation defined for the safety function to be obtained. It does, not, uh, it does not allow to have redundant protection from over voltage issue, while a safety power supply system redundant protection are fundamental requirement. And again, standard power supply can be used in a redundant configuration, but they do not guarantee that our application is totally safe for the reason related to common, fault, uh, common mold faults. And also standard power supply often require external O-ring diodes to allow for redundancy. This means that uh, we need to add external wiring that especially for high load, uh, like high load currents create a high voltage drop, which has a, a strong impact on the supply voltage. It's true that um, it's possible to adjust uh, the output voltage to compensate for uh, the voltage drop, but uh, this operation increases consumption considerably. In addition, a standard power supply has a, a higher number of spurious fault that, uh, than a safety power supply. We know well how a spurious fault can also lead to dangerous failures of a supply use internal components with a limited operating range to keep the cost down. This affects the lifetime of the device. For this reason, internally to the safety power supply are used components with a, an higher operating range that allow the system to work at a lower stress level. This leads to less failures and consequently a considerable longer length, lifetime that standard power supply system. At this point, why it's important to use a safety power supply system in our Sorry. application? First of all, we know that uh, the sp standard um, voltage for a normally energized load is in the 20, 30 volt DC range. Condition that lead to power supply output voltages between uh, 2 and 20 volt and higher than 30 volt are considered dangerous failures, which uh, negatively affect the application. Well, a safety power supply significantly reduce and detect the dangerous fault thanks to a built-in diagnostic system. In fact, if an anomalous output condition is detected by the safety power supply diagnostic, it brings the output to zero volts, which represent the safe fault condition, plus a full transistor alerts the PLC system, which can act as per C specification. Even in the case 
of uh, safety power supply output over voltage condition, the internal diagnostic activate the redundant protection system for limiting the output voltage, which bring the later at zero volt dismiss into a safe fault condition. But what are the possible risk and condition that we consider dangerous in relation to the use of a power supply? The concept of safety is very important also with regard to power supply system because the failure of a power supply can cause serious accident that leads to the serious losses in terms of human lives, serious environmental damages, and serious cost loses for company. For this reason, it's necessary to have a safe device that guarantee high performance. But uh, what are the dangerous conditions for a power supply system? Well, mainly there are two dangerous uh, fault conditions. The first one is uh, an undefined load voltage in a between uh, 2 and 20 volts. The other two are uh, the ones that bring uh, the output of our system to an over voltage. This means a voltage higher than uh, 30 volt DC or even uh, 35 volt DC are considered as, as dangerous and potentially destructive. But let's see in details. Let's analyze what happens when the output voltage of our system reaches an undefined voltage between 2 and 20 volt DC. This condition must be considered as dangerous failure of uh, our power supply because an incorrectly powered load works or can work out of specification. And this leads to a reduction in a load performance that can cause a premature instrument failure. Often we try to avoid this issue using redundancy, but uh, we mistakenly think that uh, two power supplies in parallel are sufficient to make us uh, immune from possible faults uh, in the power supply system. Redundancy cannot solve on its own and cannot guarantee us immunity from power supply failure because a standard power supply, it does not take into account the common mode fault that can afflict standard power supplies. These common mode faults can cause spurious system faults with the related production downtime, which will significantly affect cost. The redundancy of safety power supply minimizes the risk because common mode fault are considered in the seal calculation necessary to get the certification for a safety related device. The second dangerous failure condition of a power supply is when the output voltage reaches a value higher than 30 volt. In this condition, the load is subject to an extra voltage which can damage it. Or in case of out of voltage higher than 35 volt DC, the field instrument can suffer a definitive disruption. We can take, for example, an engine, an engine a cooling system, which works thanks uh, to a standard power supply, for example. Suppose that, uh, that the standard power supply fails and goes into an over voltage condition, damaging this cooling system. This will lead to an overheating of the engine, which will lead to serious consequences for the whole system connected to it. Once again, I want to underline the value of having a safety power supply system, which guarantees us high performance and high safety. As I, I say, now we introduce the concept of a safety power supply applied to a typically application as a, the energize to safe or energize to safe. As we know, typically the safety system are designed to remove power to the system 
uh, in, in this case, we are in front of the energized to safe application. Therefore, the failure of the power supply, which goes to zero output voltage, is considered a safe failure. So we assume that uh, all safety functions are the energized to safe or the energized to trip type. Really, there are many applications where the safety function is to energize the load. Therefore, of uh, the energized to safe or energized to trip type, as uh, for example, in fire and gas system. A safety power supply is designed to guarantee a SIL2 or SIL3 safety level, also for e-energized to safe application, which need to energize the load on request. Well, for this type of application, redundancy and overvoltage protection are essential. Overvoltage protection, uh, as mentioned above, is fundamental in a safety power supply uh, system because it allows us to reduce the risk of a system downtown considerably. In fact, if one of the safety power supply fails in an overvoltage condition, the protection brings the output to zero, allowing the other safety power supply to continue working correctly without the risk of sending the system to shut down. A standard power supply without protection would cause a shutdown of the wool plant with the consequent repercussion of, on the productivity and cost. A still free level power supply system with over voltage protection is able to increase operation safety, productivity, and reduce cost. A power supply redundancy system must be used when the safety of the power supply is essential. For this reason, the redundant power supply systems are used in critical sectors such as uh, oil and gas or pharmaceutical. And in all those applications where the loss of power supply translates into a, the loss of sensitive information or in the, all those applications, where the certainty of having a correct power supply on a request is fundamental. It must uh, also be used in all system where every minute of production downtown is extremely costly. Let's talk about system availability to the process. As uh, we see from the slide on the screen, for the energized to safe application, typically normally energized load, the seal free safety level is easy reached through a type of one of uh, out of one configuration. For this uh, type of application, we can achieve true redundancy and increase in availability to the process. This allows uh, us a further quality step in guaranteeing production continuity at the plant and higher safety levels. As regards energized to safe application, typically normally uh, de-energized load, as mentioned above, redundancy is essentially to reach a SIL2 or SIL3 level. In fact, without redundancy, with a single safety power supply, only the SIL1 level can be reached and also availability to the process is low. But by composing a configuration one out of two or one out of three, it's possible to get an higher C level up to C3 and at the same time increase the availability of the process also for energized to safe application. Uh, well, Andrea, uh, I think we have a point. Yeah, uh, thank you, Massimo. People, are, I hope they're still there. Okay, we have, we want to launch and uh, just to interrupt, of course, and uh, to see what is uh, clear, maybe not clear to you. Maybe a small, let's say, <clears throat> short, let's say, uh, poll. If you, the, the question is how does an redundancy improve safety on in case of undervolt situation, in case of overvolt situation, in both cases, not above. If you like to answer, of course, us is anonymous. We don't uh, say, 
treat you in a different way, please answer. <clears throat> We can, of course, uh, say that redundancy improve or not improve over voltage in under voltage. What is uh, your answer? <coughs> we give another extra second to you. <clears throat> and then we'll, uh, we'll close it. Any other people want to answer? Otherwise, I will close it. I stop now. I think I want to share with you. And of course, the results is, of course, the most of you would say that answer in the correct ways. In both cases, the, the, the redundancy is very important in case of under voltage and also over voltage because at least one power supply remain active in for the 20 volt, 4 volt, uh, plus minus, let's say, uh, the, um, the nominal uh, voltage you want to apply to your, to your notes. I want to stop it now, and uh, let's continue with the presentation, with the maximum presentation. Oh, maybe it's my side, this part. Yes, so, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. So, uh, we have seen that, uh, of course, uh, also, all the parts, also the norm IC61 and underweight, uh, mentioned that uh, also the power supply is a fundamental part in the loops, must be explained in different ways. And uh, what are the risks uh, for possible failure uh, of the power supply when you apply in the safety loop? When you apply, in, we have a safety PSU, you have a safety bus, we have safety. Uh, See, devices in your loop and uh, why this power supply should not be considered in this loop. And this is a very important. There is, of course, uh, look at this slide, um, power supply as a significant, of course, the valve in the safety loop as uh, the most important uh, uh, weight. So it can be the mechanical part is uh, very important, but uh, nevertheless, uh, power supply has to be considered as, a, as a, the a probability of failure and uh, the, the, the possibility that uh, power supply is, uh, sometimes is essential because you are powering everything. If your power supply fails, everything fails. There is uh, also, look at this, uh, very important is uh, the uh, functionality. So, there are possibility of under voltage, uh, over voltage, uh, and uh, the, this uh, also graphic explain how the situation changed by the time. So if you start from C3 level today, by few day, few years, uh, and maybe not only few years, maybe one year or even less, the valves goes out. So and the power supply also can be, has to be retested after a few years because. Uh, this is uh, uh, the failure probability. The thing is, very small difference is that uh, in the uh, probability, probability failure on demand, uh, there are dangerous detected, dangerous undetected failure. The dangerous undetected, undetected of course, are the most uh, critical because uh, they are, are dangerous and you cannot detect that those failures. But if you are using power supply with the, uh, um, like with monitoring, uh, with diagnostic, uh, those uh, dangerous and detective failure can become dangerous detected. So those remain dangerous, but you can detect, you can, uh, you can recognize such failures. And you can uh, uh, say, uh, test it or the work in advance. I think there are some questions, Massimo, probably here. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Can we get uh, the yeah, question from, yeah? It's yeah. well, Yeah. Can we get any document on seal free power supply advantage and differentiating from normal redundant power supply? Yes, of course, we can get this uh, document uh, from our documentation and uh, send uh, to the our attendee via mail. It's not, 
it's not possible. Uh, okay, let me send you to to this attendee. If you any of you want to have it as well, just write us. Okay. And the other question is uh, regarding the IPS is using SIL4 system. Does it mean that all the associated components are uh, of SIL4, including the power supply system? Well, SIL4, I don't know, Marcin, what about SIL4? It's, it's not in our... Uh, yeah. In our portfolio, the, the SIL4 uh, oh, devices, so yes. But I think that the, the attendees uh, have a reason. Yeah, there is a demand. There is possibly probably a demand for this. Yeah. But of course, with our power supply, we cannot reach the SIL4. OK, uh, let's go ahead. What I did, something? Can you see the screen or not? Yeah, we are on the last slide. OK, great. The, the first presentation. Let me check. OK, sorry. OK, yeah, we are at the end. We finish, probably. Yeah. Now we have, uh, we want to close it, this presentation that we have the Q&A yeah. session. We have the question we are usually asked about uh, the, the today's topic, the power supply system. And uh, if you want to share the presentation, Andrea. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm not so fast, but I'm doing it. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, you can see. Okay. The first question is uh, 24 volt DC power supplies considering fail safe and do not impact the safety of the SIS. Andrea, we can see yeah, something we about have, it. We have, a, I think Massimo explained it different, uh, in different uh, um, in different ways. Of course, that's not true because there are different failures, as we have seen. There are over voltage. So, an over voltage, over 30 volt, can damage the instrumentation, can burn the instrumentation. There is a, in the market, there are cases where the, the failure of a power supply was uh, destructive on total instrumentation. So, but also, also, the output uh, between uh, 2 and 20 volts, so the low and under voltage, are dangerous conditions. Okay? Because you are applying a power supply is, uh, out of the typical operating range. Of course, if you have a redundant uh, power supply, you can avoid the situation. But, but the thing is uh, that <clears throat> there is a common cause, of, cause, cause failure in the in the hardware <coughs> is called sorry <coughs> is called beta factor very important uh don't know if you are aware about that but uh, beta factor is uh, the factor is a probability of failure at the same time so simultaneously for the hardware that uh, have been produced by the same manufacturer with the same batch at the same time so there is a common, the beta factor is quite uh, important. So I would say that if you're using also another power supply, standard another power supply, there is this beta factor that uh, could, let's say, have a big effect. And maybe the two power supply, if they're redundant, they can figure the same uh, at the same time. But they have a question, Massimo. Open yes, yes, from, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, is it possible to know how much hours power supply is under operation? Well, Andrea, uh, I need uh, uh, to verify this point, but uh, if I remember well, uh, through the diagnostic module, is possible to have a count of the hours uh, uh, in which the power supply is under operation. But uh, I prefer to verify this point. Yeah, yeah there are power supplies with uh, diagnostic, with display, with the uh, not just communication that can give you this information, but uh, will uh, let us know, we we'll let it let uh, to the customer know that uh, this point 
quickly yes. in a short time by, by mail. Okay. Because uh, through the uh, diagnostic model, it's possible to have uh, uh, under control a different uh, uh, data. And I think also the hours is uh, possible. Uh, uh, is uh, uh, in in this uh, in this uh, in this data. Okay. So we have a request why it is written in Italian, but we try to translate it in English because it's for uh, make all the other people know. So if in the market there are software that are able to calculate the. Uh, the coefficient uh, for the failure, uh, if for the let's say the dangerous failures, maybe software can diagnose, can uh, distinguish the diagnostic, uh, say, say, dangerous from uh, non dangerous failure, yeah. and uh, to understand if uh, there is uh, which cell level we are, we are reaching. Not sure. Not sure about that. I think we don't know. Do you know, Massimo? Yeah, I agree we, with you. We don't have answer for such uh, such questions. Maybe we can get you back uh, soon by email, uh, by say, of course, uh, uh, ask it to our our department. Okay. Well, uh, okay. We can go so, on uh, yeah. uh, with the presentation. How power supplies can influence performance of SIS and what is the their design and preventing maintenance requirements? Okay, so uh, so basically we see that uh, in uh, in the SIS, uh, the SIS is designed to to trip and to safe state by losing power. So this is a call to energize to save, uh, uh, to energize to trip uh, functionality. So in case of the power fails, uh, of course, uh, has to reach a safe state. But uh, this is, I would say, uh, not, uh, is not uh, okay for the factory where the power cannot be turned off because uh, uh, certain architectural availability has to be respected. So we have uh, two roles in the in the safety for power. So the power needs to be reliable. So the over voltage need to be protect needs to protect from uh, uh, risk of burning. So from for uh, uh, over voltage, but also for under voltage. So and this can cause the instrument uh, to fail, not to go to a safe state. Okay, this is the first point. But also the power needs to be available. And uh, that's why I'm done saying the load sharing is a common practice in the industry. So the risk for trip uh, a plant uh, for uh, failure of uh, power supply is, uh, is uh, very, very high. It can happen, it can happen. And if you are using standard power supply, you have not the any warranty in that. So if you're using two standard power supply and under, that is, of course, is better than using one power supply, but you are not say, you're not safe from having this problem. And this can lead to the customer to, uh, to stop the production for a long time, or for a time that cause a lot of uh, loss in money. Uh, I think we have other, Questions probably. Uh, after how many years in free power supply should be replaced as a standard maintenance practice in uh, in refinery? Mm. So lifetime for this power supply is twenty years. Twenty years, yeah. yeah. Let's say, no, let's say of course uh, they those are still three for few years. Uh, but uh, and it is uh, to be tested uh, regularly to keep uh, the CL3 level. But uh, after a certain period, cannot be tested anymore because of course we are, uh, our supply is uh, is uh, and is a lifetime condition. So we'd say that twenty years uh, time. 
we have a safety manual that describes the type of procedure to maintain the seal level for uh, for uh, for twenty yeah. years. Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. So there is also, of course, uh, uh, yeah, is the question about the tea proof and uh, how you keep uh, can keep this uh, this uh, uh, seal treat level over the time. So testing and testing, of course. Uh, don't know. We have some details about the next slides about the uh, tea proof. Okay. Another question is uh, the differences. Uh between safe and dangerous failures. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's not this one. This one. This one? Okay. Yes. So, uh, typical range, 24 volts, uh, between 20 and 30 is uh, the range standard for, but, uh, for the power supply, but uh, uh, there are dangerous states, of course, that is uh, repeated again, below 20, the over 30, that is uh, uh, the, the, the situation may change. Uh, and uh, both of them, we repeat, are dangerous, okay? But the seal certification grants that uh, the power supply is suitable for the seal level with a certain PFD. Okay. And the multiple over water protection because the power supply, central power supply, uh, say, has a triple over water protection from, with different uh, typology that is also important because they are not the same. There are triple typology of over water protection that protect from having more than 30 voltage out uh, on uh, your load. And also, <clears throat> we say that uh, seal lever for non-energized is a uh, non-energized load is seal three without any redundancy, while the, for non-energized, uh, one single power supply is, uh, is a seal one. If you want to reach a single, uh, the seal two, you need uh, one extra for seal three and another one. So redundancy is fundamental in this case for, for reaching higher cell level for normally energized load. But it also in this case increases the safety and increase also the availability. Yeah. So the next question is <laughs> what is the difference between safety and the availability? Okay. So safety is the only parameter that is considered by IEC 61508. Safety, so they don't is a so say that the device is would be safe is able to perform certain function when it's required. So in this case, the power supply has to be has to be safe because maybe it can be turned on and turned off when demand. Okay, so in this case, uh, also maybe um, typical case when you need to open or close a valve or start the stop motor. So that is a uh, the safety, uh, say, um, safety um, terminology. So availability is different. Uh, is called as a proportion of time for which the keeper is able to perform its function. So uh, maybe product uh, as a power supply can be safe, but not available. Okay. Uh, because it's, uh, if you have one power supply, you lose this power supply, which is very safe, but you can lose it for different reasons because it's uh, safe, but not uh, under person mind, but any is, uh, but not if you, but at a certain time it fails, that device is not available. Okay, so your availability is very low. So availability is different from reliability. So that takes the repair time in, into account. So we say that uh, the item or key point uh, maybe is not very reliable, okay, because it feels for me the fail is very high. But if it can be repaired quickly when it fails, uh, its availability is high. Okay. So because uh, it's not safe. Uh, uh, it's not reliable, but uh, if I re can repay quickly, 
is a reliability. So this is a more or less the difference between safety and availability. And we come back to this point again. So we see that for non-energized, uh, uh, one power supply is a seal tree with, with and without redundancy. But with redundancy, I can also increase the availability. Because in this case, uh, the system is safe itself, but the, with an additional power supply, it became uh, more available. For normally the energized load, of course, so the redundant is uh, essential to increase from C1 to C2 the uh, level of safety. May I have a question, Massimo? Uh, Live question? Yes, we have a question in two. Okay. About... Okay. Yeah. Please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm using system 1,550 PLC and the supply is done by double furnace power supply module. An additional redundancy module be between. Yeah, is the diodes, the diodes of the... Is that kind of config okay or I need to find certified power supply? But I think it's better to 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 answer this question uh, with the uh, with an email because uh, we need to to ask to our expert uh, in a seal. Uh... Yeah, but uh, I say if uh, the power supply from uh, this manufacturer Phoenix in this case is uh, seal, is a one case. If it's not seal, of course uh, you cannot. Uh, even if you are redundant. Uh, you not you do not uh, the, the point is you do not uh, reach the seal lever even if you, even if you use a two redundant power supply if the power supply you use is not seal rated so this is very important it must be also one power supply seal and then you can in this case you can increase your seal level by redundancy but if it's not seal itself you cannot Maybe we can yes, give you maybe, yeah, maybe a better question by email. Uh, the other is uh, okay uh, from uh, this person. So, uh, functional safety under overwater protection. Did the GMI define based on our experience for this application? or are indicating some, some standards. Okay, uh, say, I uh, don't know this part. Marcio, can you answer? I, I think it is defined from uh, some standard to, to um, or some rules uh, to for the, the, the seal certification, but I, I don't know specifically which is the yeah. standard. It comes from common practice, probably, because uh, all the devices uh, uh, suggested the power, let's say, power supply for all instrumentation in the market to say that uh, the power supply has to be in the range between 20 and 30. Lower than, lower than 20, higher than 30 can be dangerous. Also, we try to answer via, via email this part. Okay. okay more, possible more configuration, uh, possible configuration uh, for sea levels. I think uh, in a slide that uh, show the possible configuration, uh, redundancy configuration from uh, our power supply system. Okay, it's possible to get the slides afterwards. Yes, no, no problem. Okay, do we send by email uh, to the attendees? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. okay, great. Uh, maybe, okay, there is another. Let's continue, Massimo. Okay, mm, another question. A safe power supply shall be used for the system that only participate in a safe. No, there is only one. I think. Uh, 
This one is uh, still live a possible configuration. Okay, I jumped the... Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, here we have an example for normally the energized load, like uh, the power supplies uh, and uh, the T proof, testing proof. So what is this testing proof for the people that maybe don't know? Is it the, uh, if you want to uh, maintain the CL3 level, the, the power supply, you have to test it regularly and the procedure is a bit in the manuals. So for instance, uh, for non energized law, you use, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, single power supplies. So okay, let me highlight this part. So, so you have a single power supplies and you have a, a loop where this is a, uh, is a ten percent of the sieve. You have to test every one point five years the power supply to keep the seal three uh, alive. Okay. Otherwise, you you go in the seal two, and then you seal one. You lose your seal uh, seal configuration. If uh, this power supply is, is uh, intervened for twenty percent of the sieve, you can test every three years. Okay, while the same in the same configuration, 10% or 20% in the seal two, the T proof is 18 years or 20 years. Okay, so if you use a seal three power supply, the seal two loops, uh, the testing proof is uh, very long. So after 18 years uh, is uh, the testing proof time. So you can keep for uh, all, uh, let's say, lifetime. Why? If you use two parallel power supplies, in this case you have two parallel power supplies for normally non energized, so that is a typical application. The proof time is eight years for 10% of the seed or 16 years. Okay. So very long in this case. So you see that uh, you, by using a redundant power supply, you can increase this T proof time, which is a uh, Sometimes it's critical because uh, end user don't want to test and it's uh, very difficult to, to shut down and uh, of course test the power supply, not only power supply, also the other device, but uh, at least uh, you keep uh, this uh, uh, by redundant uh, application, keep uh, this uh, or you extend the, this deep roof time by uh, three, four times. Why in the C2, it's 20 years like that, so you never test it. In the four parallel, you increase a little bit, or you reduce a little bit, and the six parallel as well, you reduce a little bit. It's a little bit different for, for a single or, uh, let's say, uh, for non de energizer. So it's uh, one year for uh, C1, two years for C, uh, sorry, one year when you use 10% and two years when you use 20%. With two more parallel, you extend this, this uh, type of time. So the, the meaning of this slide is that you can increase your testing proof, you can reduce the operation, then, and let's say the cost for testing if you use parallel and redundant configurations. Okay, Andrea, a safe power supply shall be used for the system that only participate in a safe. Uh, of course, the, uh, in the CIF, functional safety power supply must be used because, uh, we repeat, is a, a lot of things. <laughs> oh, I think it's maybe it's clear now. Uh, so, so it must be considered in the CIF, it must be used in the CIF. For the, all the other not related functional safety operation, functional safety loop, uh, a normal supply, power supply can be used instead. So it's not uh, needed. Uh, but of course, suggested. Okay, and uh, is there any solution for installation in hazardous area? Yeah, we have installation uh, of our power supply uh, suitable for zone two or DB two for uh, Americas installation. We have also a solution that is uh, allow the hot swapping in zone two. So there are two micro switches that detected that the power supply is. Uh, is uh, removed from the rack uh, and uh, trigger the hot swapper controller. Hot swapper controller, of course, disconnected AC input. So it's a, it is a quite interesting solution. So hot swapping in zone two also for 50 amps applications or more. 
and the diagnostic uh, for power supply with mod bus interface we have something about that yeah this is uh, the possibility is also an option in direct you can have these slots available for the diagnostic where you can get all data from the power supplies modules lot of different parameters uh, say of course all main parameters uh, fault and so on and uh, you can retrieve by modbus uh, 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 interface so any plc dcs probably has this modbus master port uh, where you can connect and get all these data in in uh, in uh, easily way Okay, and the comparison between redundant power supplies, rack, or uh, classic wiring? Well, this is, uh, uh, you can use uh, any, basically in the market, uh, the most common are the standard and redundant uh, wiring, but uh, say that the rack, and so if you use a rack, the power supply is already parallel, there is a redundancy, so if you have to maintain, do, you don't need to uh, disconnect because the wiring is, 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 is physically on the, on, on the, on the back plane. You don't need a connection disconnection during also normal operation. You can use in uh, some tool, uh, you can disconnect one module at a time uh, for uh, testing, maintenance, support. The other will take over the power, so you don't need to stop your plants. There is a diagnostic module that is also the main advantage. Okay, you can use it where there is a common fault, there is more bus output. When in standard and redundant uh, systems, uh, of course, all wiring is external. Maintenance required the wiring. Is a better price, of course, cost less, but there is external dials for redundancy. And uh, that is uh, sometimes the bottleneck can fail the, the diodes. Uh, we got physical diodes. We use electronic diodes inside that are most uh, reliable and also uh, consume less power. So it's a uh, less. It's, it's not a critical point for failure. Okay. The last question: What uh, happens if uh, one device connected to the power supply shorts? Oh, yeah, this is a question, and uh, one customer required this uh, uh, special feature. So if uh, you have a lot of uh, fault, uh, if you have a lot of, let's say, load connected with uh, one of those uh, fails, it can happen. Basically, uh, our supply stop giving and goes to zero. But this power supply is a specific uh, uh, feature that uh, deliver really high, high peak of current 800 times for small duration, little duration, 0.5 millisecond. And this is causing the starting opening of the fuse or the circuit breaker. So you say eliminate this uh, short from your output and then the power supply can, um, can work without any problem, continue work. Okay, we finished. Sorry, we exceed the one hour. <laughs> Too many questions. Uh, we uh, are there are questions, Massimo? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. No, okay, okay, great. Great. So we remind you that uh, there are other webinars on our uh, website. You can register to the page. You can get this via via LinkedIn, of course. Uh, you can see this uh, webinar in uh, uh, our YouTube channel. It will be available soon as the other. So if you want to see other webinars regarding to uh, function safety, EX uh, application, whatever, you, there are a lot of cybersecurity. There are a lot of topics there. So you can uh, look at and watch other webinars if you like. Let me close it. We remind you. And we all, of course, we need this uh, last uh, poll. If you like it or not, please answer as you like. We try, of course, this is uh, for every for you and uh, see if it's uh, was interesting or not. If you like it or not, if you feel there is any improvement, of course, this is very important for us. We like to understand uh, and uh, have your opinion.
Okay, thank you. Thank you for answering. I'm gonna stop now for leave people to their job. Thank you, thank you for answering. And uh, we just uh, remind you our name, emails, and face if you wanna get in touch with us. We answer to the question by email, open questions, and uh, for the slides as well. Yes. And uh, thank you, thank you, Massimo. Thank you, Andrea, and thank you to all our attendees, and uh, see you the next uh, webinar. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.